<laughs> Very good. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, Keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prime prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Peter, Peter, Peter. Last week, we heard of his great confession of faith. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus gave his great response. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Peter, the first pope, is holding the keys. And only a couple of verses later, in another exchange between Peter and Jesus, this time, considering Christ's death and resurrection. The response to Peter this time, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. 
what has changed? Did Peter lose his faith in who Christ was? No. So what did Peter do that got such a rebuke? He told Christ what he thought he should do. For then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. Peter knows who Christ is. We heard that confession last week, and that has not changed. But he also his, has his ideas about what that means, about how the Messiah should save the world, and his way does not include suffering, crucifixion, or death. And here we have a lot in common with St. Peter, for we all have our ideas, thoughts, feelings about how things should work, about what God should and should not do. It is something I hear frequently. I can't believe in a God that says or does this or that. Usually these people are just misunderstanding what God says. I can't believe in a God that hates people. Well, God does not hate people. Problem solved. But there are also challenges that are far more understandable. I can't believe in a God that would let good people die of cancer. I can't believe in a God that lets war and natural disasters happen. I can't believe in a God that lets hell exist. These things are evil, and our hatred of them, of these things, natural disasters, disease, hell, is reasonable. So what is the problem with these statements? We are much like Peter. We are judging God by our standards. In doing this, we put ourselves over God, saying his existence is based on whether we approve. God must meet what I think he should be. Yet if God is God in any sense of the word, then our standards are not what's important. God exists whether we approve or not. Further, if we look at what God knows versus what we know, it is our understanding that comes up short. Those things we do not understand have a reason far greater than we can understand. God is all good, all powerful, and all knowing. We are not. Judging God by our standards is not the answer. For there really are things we do not understand. Why these things are allowed are reasonable questions. But saying that God does not exist or judging God is not the answer. Let us return to thinking about Peter. The remarkable rebuke against him is that you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He knows very well who Christ is, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, but he thinks he knows what that means and what Christ should do. The answer is he must learn to think as God does, which is not as the world does. By the world's way of thinking, Christ should have saved the world by coming to conquer on a shining horse, defeating in triumph of battle, spreading his empire across the earth, political city by city. But instead, Christ will enter Jerusalem on a donkey. Instead of conquering city by city, he will die on the cross. Only from there, rising from the dead, ascending into heaven, defeating sin and death. It is here that we find one of the great paradoxes at the heart of the gospel, and a paradox that points to a good beyond imagining, that death leads to life. 
the cross to salvation. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Christ defeated death and sin by going through it. We find our salvation involves the following, not thinking of man, but of God, following Christ and the way he leads. The way the world thinks, this makes no sense. But in Christ, in the gospel, it is the very means of salvation. It is this paradox that is the challenge. The disciples surely did not understand when Christ was arrested or when he died and was put in the tomb. It was then that they fled in fear. These things only made sense later. Yet it pointed to a glory beyond anything the disciples could have imagined. For the resurrection from the dead, the ascension, Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, that promise and future of heaven itself and beholding God face to face beyond what anyone could have imagined. And so let us return to those questions. I can't believe in a God that would let good people die of cancer. I can't believe in a God that lets war and natural disasters happen. I can't believe in a God that lets hell exist. Why does God let these things happen? The short answer, we do not know. But then Peter did not know why Christ had to, to die. The disciples were confused at every moment. It is okay that we do not fully understand, but do not let pride try to tell God whether he is allowed to exist or not. Let us not tell God what is good. Instead, let us not think as man does but instead have the humility to say we do not know. And instead of judging God by our standards, let us pray that we might start to think as God thinks, hard as it might be for us to see. For we do not always know what is best. What good can come from allowing evil? We do not know, but we know it is possible. After all, salvation came from the cross. Has that cancer, perhaps, helped pull someone closer to the cross of Christ and their salvation? We do not know. Has war and natural disaster reminded some of their weakness and brought humility and called souls to repentance and salvation? We do not know. And perhaps hell's existence is a statement of God's freedom, giving us that ability to truly love God. For the ability to say yes also means the ability to say no. Perhaps hell's existence is a statement of God's longing to what he calls us to, allowing the good of heaven. Just like Peter, we tend to think as human beings, but as, let us pray for that humility to start to think as God does and recognizing that we do not know. Instead of trying to judge God by our standards, putting ourselves over God, let us ins instead listen to the advice of St. Paul. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Standing, let us profess our faith. I believe one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down to heaven by the Virgin incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, we bring our prayers and petitions before our Heavenly Father. For the grace to speak, to be courageous in taking up our daily cross and following Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people, especially political leaders, will embrace a profound reverence for human life from conception until natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That as we celebrate Labor Day, the Lord will prosper the work of those who labor and show compassion to those who are unemployed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, let us pray for the people of this parish. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us hear the prayer. <laughs> OK. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we bring these and all our prayers and petitions before you and ask that you hear them in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hand for the praise, the praise and glory, and glory of, his of his name for our, for our good, good and the good of all of this holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Christopher, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic, and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, 
and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. You, O oh Lord, have I hope. Never let me be confounded. Deliver me in your justice. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. Bow down your ear to me, make haste to deliver me. For you are my strength and refuge. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. Into your hands I come and my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, the God of truth. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for the who fear you. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have regarded my humility, but I have put my trust in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God, my lot is in your hand. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. Oh, yeah. 
Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Got a couple of announcements. Um, as probably many of you know, we are blessed here at St. Michael's to have several people uh, come here who are in need. We try to see Christ in each one who comes, uh, whether it's for a gas voucher or for St. Bridget's Kitchen and many other needs. Um, some of you have come to know uh, the homeless people that uh, are out in front uh, of church during Mass, especially Kirk. I think many of you know him by name. And uh, so we are working with uh, Kirk's caseworker. Kirk does have an income. He also has housing. He has gotten behind in his housing payments. And so in the interests of helping him in the best way possible, my suggestion is that uh, you make a, uh, maybe put something in an envelope, if you wish, with his name on it. It's Kirk, just like Captain Kirk and uh, we'll make sure that it gets to uh, help to pay down his arrears in housing. Uh, I know sometimes people see people, uh, you know, asking for help out front. I think that would be the best way to help him and to help those that are out front in the church. So, uh, thank you. So, a few other things. Uh, our stained glass window series continues this Wednesday, September 6th at 5 p.m. Evening prayer followed by presentation and light refreshments. And this week, it's Anna Flournoy who will be presenting about the Saint Rafa Ra Raphael or Raphael, depending on where you're at, window. What? Saint Raphael is a? Saint Gabriel. I should read the sheet. <laughs> Saint Gabriel window. Uh, also, next week begins religious ed, and so the forms are at the back if anyone still needs to sign up for religious ed. Uh, additionally, tomorrow after the 10.30 Mass, if you want to come back again, 
we will be doing a little uh, during the coffee social, we'll open up the choir loft, the sacristy, and the parish office and give some uh, little tours if you want to see around some corners of the church that you haven't seen before. Uh, and with the school year being Labor Day and the school year being RAF, I believe the super raffle, the fundraiser for the school is back. So if there's any money burning a hole in your pocket, uh, I believe there will be some selling some super raffle tickets out uh, after mass. Uh, ask the students for the details. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 